I was out in my yard and I found a piece of uh, amber and it had Uh-oh. a mosquito in it. What does that mean? What does that make mean? Lots of money on eBay. Yeah. What does that mean for science? <laughs> <laughs> There's a, uh, Jason, you shared an article with me, a recent one that came out here. Uh, April 22nd, 2022, there was a survey done by YouGov. Uh, they were asking Americans about their thoughts on preserving endangered species or even bringing ones back from the dead. And what they found was that the majority of the Americans, which they surveyed, didn't want to bring dinosaurs back from extinction. They didn't so, mind bringing in or, or saving endangered species. This, I think this is interesting. They didn't mind saving endangered species that we have now. Right. That, that, that was that was like, you know, everybody, I think it was like three quarters or something were, were saying, yeah, we'd love to do that. You know, like let's take, um, you know, a beautiful bird or something that's going to – are those, those dolphins. I think there's only like 1,100 left. There's yeah, a small yeah. dolphin. Well, what about like the dodo bird? Like I'd love to see one of those things running around. You know, like that would be cool. Yeah, so, but then they turn around and then they ask them about um, bringing, like, uh, ancient animals back and no one wants that. Which is which is strange. You know, I don't know why. Think about the vast majority of dinosaurs that were just herbivores, just munching on tree leaves. Like, how cool would exactly. that be to see this massive stegosaurus or, I don't even, uh, I don't know, one with a big neck, <laughs> like, going around just munching on an oak tree. You know, because he's hungry or she's hungry. Like, I would love to see that. I don't need to have T-Rexes run around or Velociraptors. I'm only interested in the giant birds that are chewing on leaves, laying huge I, eggs. I, I want to think about the one. omelets. Yes. <laughs> Could you imagine that? <laughs> What's those big birds, like the huge ones? Ostrich. No, no. Oh, I mean, no. That we have now, but the ones that were, I mean, monsters. How big? Their eggs are probably as big as us. Yeah, we can mongo. Yeah, that's see, that's cool. Yeah, because then they have like a thirty foot wingspan or something. Oh yeah, why is this name? And they have the the long the long beak bill. Yeah, but uh, the thing that the thing that gets me on this more than anything is I I don't think it's per se we're focusing on the animal. I don't think it's the animal per se. I mean, we can get into that part, but yeah, I do think it's trusting the science. That's probably what's bothersome. Like, they're like, well, what if you bring it back and the thing creates a problem or it's like a genetic nightmare or it gets out of control? But people would, you have to, you have to consider this fact. People would be like, wait a minute, you can bring back a dinosaur or a dodo bird or a white rhinoceros just off of frozen skin cells. <laughs> can you start like printing human beings? Yes, yes, th- that's the next step. Yeah, and I th- and I feel like that's the obvious next step, right? And what was that show where the people have the little thing on the back of their heads and they can reskin? You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it was. Uh, oh, it's on Amazon. Uh, yeah. it's on Amazon Prime. I know. I know what you're talking about. Depending on how much money you have, you could reskin. Yeah, you could. You could reskin the actors. And like that's kind of confused me. First and second season. Yeah, I didn't really get it at first, but. But here's the point. Do people have a fear of what is actually scientifically possible? You know, if you can start doing this level of cloning, I mean, cloning has been an issue for for a long time since they started with those sheep. Do you remember that? And they're Mm -hmm. like, oh my God, we got to outlaw this. And then, you know, other countries were cloning pigs. And if you think about it, if we are taking... If we're taking like fertilized eggs and we can store this stuff and then do in vitro fertilization, well, why couldn't I just clone the eggs and then put that into a clone body? And I just do that stuff all day long. And then I think a lot of it for people is like, you know, especially ones with a heavy religious context, are you playing God? But Mm -hmm. then the real question is, why wouldn't you have every right to create whatever you wanted? to act in that sort of fashion, to create new things of that sort. Why is it any different from like bringing an animal back from just like creating a robot that's borderline sentient 
Why is everyone cool with the fact of Elon Musk wetware sticking that in their head, but they're worried about a grass eating dinosaur coming back, which you could put a saddle on and ride around. You know, like where's, where's the, why is there such a, is laden with fear when it, when it comes to dinosaurs, is it a lack of understanding, but people will be bring back a tortoise. Like in all honesty, how many people have seen a tortoise? Yes. I mean, I've seen some saltwater tortoises that are like probably a hundred something years old. They're beautiful animals, but for the rest, like how many have seen it? Is it, are these statistics higher because people watch Finding Nemo? Yeah. We, well, we have a false perception with that and Disney's done that, but I mean, it's like, not only do we think animals are cute, which will fucking rip your head off, but right. You know, I, I think the other thing that people probably are worried about is invasive species. I mean, I mean, you have relatives that live down in Florida. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's no, in the Everglades, there's no mammals anymore because the pythons have grown. I forgot how many they said now, I, I mean, in pythons that there is in Florida in the wild. It's a crazy number now. They're everywhere. It's bananas. Now, but, but hear, hear this. So say this, play with me here on this. Say this technology which obviously currently does exist and people start growing these things, even if somebody wanted to grow a dinosaur in the event of nuclear Holocaust and the population's way, way, way down. Wouldn't you want these technologies that increase the chance of fertilization or increase the chance of regrowing organs or anything of the sort to exist? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I don't understand why it's that much of an issue, right? And even like energetic signatures, at least you could grow something that energetically matches who you are. Like your heart cells, they beat naturally on their own if you were to remove those cells and put them in a Petri dish, right? And then depending on the resonance of these cells, if you go to apply that to somebody else's set of cells – one of them's going to take over depending on the strength of that resonance. You can see in Petri dishes, they got great videos of it. Right. So if I'm shoving my heart into somebody else who needs a heart, is that truly best for their body or would it be better to grow something that is a perfect genetic match to who they are? So they don't have to take massive amounts of medication to keep their bodies alive just because they had an organ transplant. I think it goes beyond this idea here and this article kind of polarizes men against women for wanting these things back. But I think Exploring this technology as best as possible is probably the most beneficial thing. Think about the life-saving aspects of having this sort of tech in place and nailing it, like really perfecting it with plants and animals first and then say, okay, I'm willing to try this with other aspects of human beings. Yeah, there should be a line on it to be like, we don't need to bring back any crazy Neanderthals, but I think it's still Im important that we have some sort of form or function for looking at other ways to continue our survival into the future. Am I, am well, I, I off base? No, I think you're hundred percent right. The, the one thing that I want to approach this, you know, in, in, in this episode is the irrational side of things and how we think, and we have to understand this. Um, the, the spiritual part of it, that mystical part that is so fascinating that we as humans have um, when we love stories and we love, you know, especially mythical stories, but this whole idea, and, and we've heard this before, you know, where you transplant somebody's heart into your heart and then it changes your, you know, it changes who you are and you wouldn't want a serial killer's heart because that serial killer, you know, who knows, maybe it'll give you, it'll change the way that who you are as a person, even to rational to the point of we've all taken supplements mm -hmm. that are not FDA approved. We <laughs> all go to the, the store and buy supplements. Many people take drugs. Mm -hmm. they're, they're like illegal drugs that they don't have any idea where it came from with the lab or anything. And then we have a hard time with vaccines. <laughs> I yeah, don't know like, where that came from. That's so irrational. It, we'll shove all kinds from, of shit in our body. It came from, it came from like Pfizer or Moderna, not some dudes like meth lab on you <laughs> yeah. know the corner of, you know, one eighty sixth. you know what I mean? So th that's, that's the difference here. So why are you, so the, comparative aspect of how we take these irrational perspectives and apply them to science that could be tremendously beneficial. Um, actually it does a lot of hindrance to us in our own evolution. And well, no, yeah, I mean, you know, look at the end of the study 
Alexander, look at the end of the study. It says additional data from the survey finds that nearly half, 48% of Americans, expect that humans themselves will also go extinct at some point. Well, let me give you um, a little statistic here. 99.9996% of all species that have ever resided on this planet have gone extinct. What do you think your fucking odds are? Look at the obvious. Human beings die. We all die. We all have a set lifespan. Right. It can't reside forever. Planets evolve. Atmospheres change. So you better hope that your technology affords you the ability to leave something when it becomes unhospitable, right? Or inhospitable, however you spell that word. You tracking with me on that? So those 48% of Americans, that's a pretty sharp group for looking at what's inherently obvious. Yeah, we're going to go extinct at some point. A hundred percent of people should probably be like, yeah, that should probably occur. The yeah, species and, and may go extinct. A hundred percent. And Raw talks about this, you know, that it, it helps our spirit whenever we assist and help second density beings. Right. So don't you think it's important that we can help bring back these functions of creation and learn from them and learn how to live with them. The, this coexisting idea is also beneficial for our own evolution. And I think there's so much dogma and essentially crap in the way of us really understanding a, a more directed scientific path, one that's not out in the fringes, but one that's like, let's talk about what can really benefit us tomorrow, I think is fundamentally important. That's what I want to know. I went on. This is like a, an insurance policy. If you were to bury into the stuff, and there's nothing wrong with having a dinosaur walk around. Maybe it creates better fertilizer. What do we know? Yeah, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I, I honestly don't think that uh, people have took the time to think it through. And I mean, when you look at science in and of itself, and our philosophy of science, we, we always want to separate ourselves from nature, which we do know, we know that creation offers every solution to every problem that humanity mm -hmm. will ever have or has. Why? Because creation affords you the ability to create your own problems. So therefore, it gives you everything to solve your own problems. Isn't that funny how life balances out? <laughs> That's funny. So Americans, because this is to Americans, and I know we have a lot of people from outside of America uh, Americans, this is silly. You're not going to have Jurassic Park in no. uh, uh, Wyoming. <laughs> I bet you they would love that, though. You already have it anyways. I mean, a fucking grizzly bear. God damn it. An alligator is a fucking dinosaur. It's a dinosaur. They're huge. Sharks. Dinosaurs. Great white shark. But do you, you know how big a fucking grizzly bear is, bro? They're so big. You don't. I saw one rip a door off a Lamborghini the other day. They don't give two fucks. No, they don't. It ripped a door. I want you to go try and rip a door off a car. They can roll right through in Alaska. They take them. It's like a tin can on a on a mobile home. Yeah, Just dude. I watched. <laughs> I watched one run three miles to run down a bull elk, and then yeah. dragged an eight hundred pound bull elk out of the water without yeah, even really trying. That's what they, they, I was listening to an episode the other day on, on a guy. He was talking about the difference between black bears and grizzlies. Not to get too heavy into this because we got to go, but um, <laughs> it, it's it's so hilarious. The the temperament is so different. They're bears, yeah. so different. Black bears will run. They run away every time, pretty much, unless you got unless you're in the mix with the cubs or something, or they feel threatened. Mm -hmm. But most of them, they're scared of humans. Grizzlies are like, who the fuck are you? They're the big boss. Bitch, I will big, fucking kill you. <laughs> big silver necked, big boss, big claws. You know, I eat a lot of salmon all day long. I got a big body. I'm not really worried about you puny, stick figured <laughs> little human being with your soft, supple flesh. You know what I mean? Like, get out of here. Why you know, are people and, worried about the dinosaurs when yes. a grizzly bear is a huge threat? The tiger's ripping people out of India. And can can we be honest? Now. Can we be honest? What are some of the bigger threats? Number one, human beings are the biggest <laughs> threat to themselves. And What's the planet. Second, and the planet. What's the second largest threat to human beings? Malnutrition. Third, mosquitoes. Oh, okay, yes. So yeah. let's, just, let's just be serious here about this stuff. 
lose the irrational fear, realize that science can be tremendously beneficial, right? And help us live a more balanced approach to our life and our own evolution. So, Jason, the thing was called a pterodactyl. <laughs> a so pterodactyl. If you want, Good job. Yeah. If you're I, tired I of going to that. yeah the store and getting 12 eggs, go to the store and get one giant raptor egg and scramble <laughs> that thing up once a month. You know what I mean? You got eggs for days. And and also you have to look at it in the sense of of whenever you have any type of animal that is going extinct, whose fucking fault is it most of the time? It's typically human beings killing things off all the time. <laughs> yes, look at the buffalo here. Americans. Look at the buffalo. Look at how we poach dolphins, like all this nonsense. Well, listen, enough being said, don't want to belabor it or uh, beat a dead horse. Well, the question is, can we bring back those extinct horses? You could probably beat as much as you want because we'll bring it right back with science. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today on Higher Density Living.